All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free. Take a learning. And in this video, we're going to return to engineering dynamics and talk about curvilinear motion in terms of polar coordinates, also known as radial and transverse coordinates or components. And what we'll do in this video is provide a quick overview of position, velocity, and acceleration equations in polar coordinates or the radial and transverse components. And then I will explain or show you the derivation for position, velocity, and acceleration equations using our radial and transverse components. Now, before I get started, let me give you a quick rundown or my perspective on these coordinate systems that we use in dynamics. So we have, you know, all of us are familiar with rectangular or Cartesian coordinates or components. And what we're doing with rectangular coordinates is essentially defining a world that's built using X and Y. We're defining locations based on rectangular shapes. And more specifically, we're essentially establishing or choosing corners of rectangles as our location or position of whatever it is with respect to a reference. And so when I, when I look at, let's say, an XY coordinate system, I'm, I will draw a horizontal and vertical. And the world here is broken up or essentially established as kind of rectangles. And when I choose an X coordinate, I'm choosing one of the vertical lines of the rectangle. And when I choose a Y coordinate, I'm choosing one of the horizontal lines of that rectangle. And together they define a corner of the rectangle. And so in this rectangular coordinate system, or in these Cartesian coordinates, you know, we're, we're establishing positive X, positive Y like this. This is very typical. This is the world that we use. Now in a polar coordinate system or in our radial and transverse, we're looking, we're establishing what is a radial position and an angle, R and theta. And we use those to basically define the world in circles. You know, I don't need a horizontal and a vertical for this, but I will put one. And here, what we're doing is when we choose, when we select a radius, we're choosing one of the circles in our world, in our 2D world. So we're choosing one of these circles with the radius. So it might, it might look like this. So this would be our, our radial choice, R. And then our theta or our transverse coordinate is establishing the location on the edge of that circle or on the perimeter of that circle. So here, if I am located here, boom, then this direction right here, this would be my theta. And theta is usually defined with respect to the horizontal. And so this horizontal line would represent theta equals zero degrees here. And so maybe the, the unit vectors or the way that you might draw the positive sense, or you might see this just like I had for x and y right here, we would choose here. We would have a reference line We'd have a radial direction plus r from the origin and this transverse plus theta defined from the horizontal. And the coordinates of this point would be r comma theta like this. All right. In dynamics, we use both these coordinate systems to establish the location and then define you know, position, velocity, and acceleration using a multitude of coordinate systems, usually to simplify our problem and to find out more information here. So with that overview, now let's look at how do I look at position, velocity, and acceleration I'll give you an overview of that in terms of polar coordinates. So let's start by considering a particle that's moving on a curved path. We haven't selected a coordinate system or anything yet, and we can define this path's motion using any coordinate system that we want, whether it's x, y, a normal and tangential, or radial and transverse. So here is this path, and at some instant of time, here is the particle. And the particle has a velocity and an acceleration, which I will, the velocity is tangent to the path. It's kind of moving up the path, if you will. And there's an acceleration vector also. And I'll just happen to draw the acceleration vector this way. 
And we haven't chosen a coordinate system yet. We just have this particle that's moving on a path. It has a velocity and an acceleration. And so now if I want to choose, let's say I want to define these velocities and accelerations using polar coordinates, the first thing I have to do is establish an origin. I, I got to pick a point a fixed point as my origin. I'll put a dot over here. This will be my fixed reference or origin. And, and then once I have my origin, I can define my positive orientations or directions. And the positive radial direction goes from the origin through the particle as if it's skewering. Uh, you know, you have a line that's skewering through the particle from the origin. And so here, this positive radial direction, imagine a line from the origin through the particle, and it would continue out like this. And I will call this my plus r direction, my positive radial direction. And then transverse, the transverse direction associated with this plus theta would be 90 degrees to the r or the radial component. And because our directions are here, we're going to choose this as like a reference for the transverse and our radial direction goes here, and then our theta is defined. So our transverse direction would be 90 degrees to the radial component and going like that. And this would be my plus theta. And I could use unit vectors to define these directions. I could say here, this is plus. This is the unit vector points in this direction, u r hat, the radial unit vector, and this would be the transverse unit vector, u theta hat, like that. And so I have the, this velocity and acceleration vectors. My position vector now, it'd be from the origin to the particle, and I would go boom, like this. This is a position vector. And in summary, I can just to give you an overview of how these equations all look like now, well, here, the position vector only is only in the radial direction, so it would be defined as some magnitude r, all acting in the radial direction, or u r hat, and this would be my position vector. My velocity vector, if you see my velocity vector here, I could break this velocity vector up into two components. There would be one component here. This would be the radial component of the velocity vector. And then I could have a transverse component acting here. And this would be my transverse component of the velocity vector. And here, this velocity vector would be vr, the magnitude of vr here in the ur hat direction plus v theta, u theta hat direction right here. Here, the vr is also called r dot, which is called the radial velocity or the velocity in the radial direction. This has units of like meters per second or length over time plus r theta dot, u theta hat. And in this case, r is the radial position, which has units of length, so like meters. And theta dot is an angular velocity or the change in angle or angular position with respect to time. And so this would be angle divided by time units. And typically what we're going to use are radians per second. And, and then if I take a time derivative of the velocity, I will get an acceleration vector. And the acceleration vector also has components in the radial and transverse direction. And so this right here would be the radial component of the acceleration a r hat and then I could draw it over here or either way so here or here I could say this would be the transverse component of the acceleration like this and this I can rewrite my a uh, my acceleration vector as u r hat plus the transverse component u theta hat like this and then you know through um, the, the definitions that I'm going to give to you right now, but if you're interested in derivation, you're going to want to stick around after this right here. This is going to be r double dot minus r theta dot squared hat plus r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot u theta hat like this, okay? And essentially what we have here are some additional terms that maybe aren't in before is that r double dot is a radial acceleration, and this will have length over time squared, or meters per second squared. And theta double dot is an angular acceleration, which is going to be an angle, angular distance over time squared.
like this. And that what we're going to typically use is radians per second squared. All right. And you can probably see a relationship between the radial position, the radial velocity, and the radial acceleration, just like we would have a relationship between the angular position, theta, and the angular velocity and angular acceleration. Almost like looking at 1D motion if we're only looking at the angle or the radial direction. And here, just to make sure that we encompass everything, if I need the, the speed of the particle, so here, if I want the magnitude of the velocity, City here. This would just be the square root of some squares of the r component plus the theta component. This, and similarly with the acceleration, if I want the magnitude of the acceleration, this would be the r component plus a theta squared, the transverse component. And so just to make sure that we're clear, one last thing, just to make sure these are equal, vr is equal to r dot and v theta equals r theta dot. And similarly, ar is r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And a theta is this term right here, r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot. All right, so hopefully this was interesting. This is the overview portion of our radial and transverse components. These are all the equations that we use when we deal with polar coordinates in our dynamics course. And you could stop here if you're not interested in the derivation or the explanation of how do we go, how do we go from this position vector to this velocity vector, right? And then how do we go from a derivative of this velocity vector into this acceleration vector? So stick around if you're interested in that.